and welcome to Live in the Hive. I'm Michelle Eagleton and you're watching the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. Now a big hello if you're watching on the Live in the Hive Facebook page or maybe you're watching on the I Love Manchester Facebook page, that iconic brand dedicated to community and culture. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, stay with us for the next 30 minutes. If you love theatre, you are in the right place. And we've got some cracking guests for you this evening. Yes, joining us tonight, we have got the wonderful people from The Way Old Friends Do and Vignettes. Well, in a moment, Ian Hallard is going to be joining me to tell me all about his obsession with ABBA and how it led to him penning the way old friends do. He's starring in it himself, he's on tour, it's going down a storm with audiences and it's winging its way to the Lower in Salford very, very soon. Now, not only have we got Ian tonight, we've also got two wonderful ladies. They are Hannah Ellis Ryan and Alex Keelan. They are behind Vignettes, which is celebrating the fourth instalment at Hope Mill Theatre in Ancos. It's a series of short plays, new work. They're going to tell us all about it a little bit later on in the show. And of course, if that wasn't enough every week, you know by now, we bring you Greater Manchester Theatre News. And this week, we've got a sneak peek at Greatest Days, the movie. If you are a Take That fan, you are going to absolutely love, love, love this. But first, let's kick off with another super group, the foursome from Sweden who've been entertaining us for over 50 years. Of course, it is ABBA and this week I caught up with Ian Hallard who's penned a brand new play about his love of that group, the way old friends do. And I tell you what, you are gonna love it. Check this out. When I heard about this play, I've gotta say, I was very, very excited. It talks about devotion, desire, friendship, and drag queens. I mean, what more can you ask for, Ian? We do our best. We try to have a little, there's a little bit of something for everyone. <laughs> well, it sounds absolutely incredible. And you, of course, not only performing this, but you have wrote this brand new play. What what inspired you? Because on the radar, I've, I've, I've heard you're a bit of an ABBA fanatic, right? I've been trying to keep that quiet. Who told you that? I <laughs> Can't trust anyone these days. Um, yeah, yeah. I've um, well, I wrote it uh, nearly four years ago now. So obviously, before the world went pear shaped, and we all yeah. had to lock ourselves in our homes for a bit. Um, and I hadn't. Uh, people had asked me over the years, "Have oh, you ever thought about writing anything?" Um, and I'd always said, oh, "I don't know what I'd really write about." And then I thought, "Well, they say write what you know." Um, and I knew the one subject that I had all the details and information at my fingertips that I wouldn't need to go and Google or do any research or basically do any hard work for was ABBA. So it's, it's basically just because I'm lazy. Oh, well, no, it's not. It's because it's a labour of love as well, because not only is, you know, it's something that you love that group, but also it's saying Birmingham and you're a mm. Brummie. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what I happened think... to the accent, Ian? Oh, I can still do it when I need to. I do for the play. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a bit of a hint of one. <laughs> Just um, call me Babs and I'm yours. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I kind of felt Birmingham was a bit neglected um, in drama and kind of fictionally. Um, I mean, other than Peaky Blinders, I can't really think of anything that's uh, certainly recently that's, that's, that's set in Birmingham uh, and Doctors, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so I thought, well, let's redress the balance a bit and um, yeah, and bring it home. And, and it was it was very happy because it, it was originally produced at the Birmingham Rep. So that was part of the appeal there that, that, that um, they wanted to encourage a a homegrown writer and a play that was that was set in the in the city and is that where it first opened up because you know there must have been a lot of love in that audience it was lovely it was very touching yeah i have to admit i did have to stifle a little bit of a tear on the, the first night when we had people cheering and standing on their feet and uh yeah no it was lovely it, re it really was all the kind of local references um uh i think it means a lot to people to just see them their kind of lives reflected on on stage and the things that they're familiar with. And this must mean a lot to you, seeing it. I mean, this is your baby. Mm -hmm. And now you're on tour with it and you're getting great reactions. What was it 
What was it like then on that opening night? I know you said you're a bit teary, but was it like, God, oh, you know, four years of all this work and, and here we are? Yeah, absolutely. And my, my my family were there, my my mum and dad and my my cousin and and friends, old, old school friends who I hadn't seen for years kind of turned up and 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 came in there. And the play isn't autobiographical, but inevitably there are little details that you think, oh, that happened to me in real life and that was quite funny, so I'll 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 pop that into the play. Um so there were a couple of, of people from my sixth form who straight away were like, oh, "Was that about so and so?" I'm like, might have been <laughs> i've changed the names <laughs> I, I i love that i love that because it is about friends who reconnect isn't it after 30 years is, and yeah. come up with this bizarre idea of an abba group like we've never seen it before the gender swap we've got some drag going on haven't we we have i know um, and I, I when i had the idea i thought oh, surely someone's had had that idea before and thought of it before but apparently not um or if they have they haven't done any research they haven't done ad any advertising haven't put themselves on google or anything like that so uh, to my knowledge i mean as my character says in the play when it's suggested to him that that, uh, that we do it we kind of go well maybe the world simply isn't crying out for a drag ad tribute band um and may maybe that's the case but uh, but no it was um yeah so i but it, the idea just made me laugh and certainly when we got into the rehearsal room the first day that we we tried the wigs on and Sarah and Rose who play Benny and Bjorn because it's not just men dressed as women, it's women yeah. dressed as men, we have a yeah. full gender swapped version. So uh, the brilliant Sarah Crow, who people probably remember from Four Weddings and a Funeral and a Philadelphia Cheese advert, as well as being absolutely, as well as being an Olivier award winning actress. Uh, she she is absolutely hysterical and when she gets the the wig and the beard on as benny um sitting at the keyboard there's there's no stopping her so um so yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun <laughs> how do you not crack up i would crack up me every single night sometimes we do sometimes we do actually actually one of sarah's funniest moments i'm not actually on stage for so i can I, I i i go and get changed very quickly do my quick costume change and then i stand in the wings every night and, and watch her and i still i still laugh every time and I, i'm just i'm quite relieved i'm not on stage with her at the time because i don't think i'd be able to keep a straight face <laughs> <laughs> i love it you talked about costume changes then i mean this isn't the first time that you have worn women's clothes because you have played the dame quite a lot in pantos, haven't you? So are you preferring the drag to the dame? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, the the makeup is, isn't, is a, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but the makeup for, for this is a little bit more subtle. I'm not doing full on kind of big red, red cheeks and red nose and the huge eyebrows. It's all a little bit toned down. But I'm actually, I'm actually in my dressing room at the moment, Michelle, so you can probably see I have the, the wig ready to go here. And I can even give you a little sneak peek as a... Oh, please. Uh, an asymmetric leotard. So there we go. This is... That goes, that goes on a little... <laughs> a little later. Absolutely. I love it. Oh, it's my God. As well. <laughs> it's a dream. It's a dream as an ABBA fan to become ABBA. This is the closest you get, Ian. <laughs> I know. I know. It's mad. <laughs> what do you think it is about ABBA that has stood the test of time? You know, because it's transcended generations. My daughter is 12 mm. and she just belts out Mamma Mia all the time. She she knows her ABBA tunes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because one of the sort of background to the plays that the character I play was has been an ABBA fan all his life. But in the in the 80s, it was really uncool. It was really unfashionable to nobody kind of liked like Tabbo. Certainly they didn't admit to it. Um, so it's really wonderful to see them have this renaissance where I mean there are a few people who admit to not liking them but it's not many um, but I just think it's quality quality stands the test of time you listen to those pop songs and they haven't dated at all I mean Waterloo is 50 years old next year and it still sounds as fresh and catchy as, as it as it ever did and then and then I, but I also think people do really connect with with the emotions as well, they got a lot of criticism in their early days for for sort of banal lyrics. But you kind of go, well, actually, you try writing lyrics in your second language, and at, and and they did, of course, become much more sophisticated. So towards the end of the career, when they were recording things like "The Winner Takes It All" or "Slipping Through My Fingers," which of course has become really well known through through the Mamma Mia films and, and shows, it's stuff that really 
really touches people it's proper genuine emotions do you know what you're talking there and i'm loving it because i'm seeing your passion shine through about <laughs> i'm thinking he needs to go on mastermind and have that <laughs> <in the subject. laughs> maybe, I, maybe. I did i did have a tweet a few weeks ago from an abba fan who said it was so lovely to see a play where all about abba where it was 100 percent factually accurate and i did find myself thinking what, as opposed to all those plays about Abba that are only 75% accurate or 25%. <laughs> hey, I take that as a very good compliment. I definitely yeah, want to have it out absolutely. there. I'm not quibbling. I'm not quibbling. I mean, the ultimate compliment would be for Abba to give you the seal of approval. Have they? Have they been in touch yet, Ian? Well, we've got a song. We've, we're allowed that they've given us permission to sing one of the songs in the show. So they, they know that the show is happening and, and they, they've allowed us to do that, which I'm eternally grateful for. Um, I They haven't been to see it yet. I don't, I'm not expecting them to. And I don't I, I think I don't know if I'd be able to perform if I knew they were in. Um, so, so I think it's probably for the best that we, because of course we're obviously that they, they've got a lot in their hands with Voyage and Mamma Mia and all the official versions of the show. Whereas we're 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 unofficial. We're we're not kind of officially a, approved or anything. But they have very kindly let us sing a song. So, um, but it's we're, not we're, a musical though. Let's get no. that right, is it? So it's kind of the ABBA music features in it, but it's not what you would go to as like a Mamma Mia, Mia show, yeah? No, 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 no. If people think they're gonna come along and actually see the band perform, then, then no, it, it, it's a behind the scenes story. It's about it's a comedy about the characters and, uh, and ABBA, although that's the background and the setting to it, it's not a play about ABBA, it's about these characters and the ups and downs of their love lives and friendships and, and working relationships as well. So that's, that's what I wanted to write about. What's it been like though, having your husband, Mark Gatiss, direct you because i've got to say me and my husband he's an artist i do I like this presenting kind of thing and mm. we have worked together on a project once and i was like oh not sure about that oh, it's like giving my kids driving lessons in the future it's like oh no yeah. send them off what's yeah. it been like has it, has it has it been easy well we've worked together before a few times we did we did a play um the boys in the band when we had a great time working together and obviously then we were just kind of we were both in it neither of us had written or directed it um but we have we have very similar tastes and we have a good kind of working relationship so i, th I thought we'd be okay and it, and it was fine it was lovely we really i i trust his judgment completely so we we a few lines that we didn't think were quite working on one little scene which was like i don't think we really need it i'm like yeah i agree we'll get rid of that so yeah unfortunately it was all a bit dull in terms of there were no sort of fireworks and arguments and stuff but as i good. it is good absolutely although as i said to him well you know obviously the the um the example set by abba in terms of couples working together professionally wasn't a great one that didn't work out brilliantly for them but as i said to mark well if if the worst comes to the worst and that does happen at least we know if we follow abba's trajectory we'll we'll get back together in another 40 years time in digital form and we'll do that <laughs> There's we'll always, there's always that, isn't there? There's always, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we can't wait because those Northerners would do love our ABBA and this sounds absolutely fantastic. And also a really nice positive play as well. I feel like we're going to come out of this and feel like, oh, I feel upbeat and I feel kind of like, you know, just inspired. That's what, that's what people have said. And that's kind of what I thought the theatre going public might be looking for post covid you know once we were once once we uh once the theatres reopen that obviously there's a place for tragedies and serious stuff as well um but i thought people just want to come and have a good time and and it is sort of heartwarming it's been it's so lovely to hear people laughing and standing on the, getting on their feet and cheering at the end as well so yeah i couldn't ask for more it's been amazing and i also think that it could do well as a tv version you know who knows who knows we'll uh we'll see there have been a, a few tentative uh discussions but we'll uh we'll we'll see how, the, how this goes first and, uh, oh do it do it do it but first <laughs> of all get your platforms on and race towards with that glorious wig and that outfit it looks absolutely <laughs> fabulous i honestly can't wait 
Oh, I had such a ball chatting to Ian there about the way old friends do. It sounds absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for this to come to the Lowry. And of course, not long now, it's coming in May. So hopefully I'll see all of you down there. Could have chatted to him for absolutely ages. What a nice guy. Anyway, it's still to come on the show. We've still got some lovely guests too. We've got Hannah Ellis Ryan and Alex Keelan. They're going to be telling me all about vignettes, which is coming to Home World Theatre in Ancoats. But of course, before all of that, every week we give you this. Greater Manchester Theatre News. And this week we had the release of something very, very exciting. Yes, the wait is over. Greatest Days of the movie is on its way. <laughs> So we're on the band. We're never gonna lose touch. One, two, three. Win tickets to see your favourite boy band reunite in Athens. Are you ready? I am ready. Today this could be. Are you screaming yet, Rachel O'Flynn? Big fan of you, Rachel. I'm their biggest fan of the whole entire world. You know who you're going to take with you to see the boys? 25 years. Double trouble? <laughs> Where is Rachel? Here I am. You ladies are up front. Hiya, three of them are on Bring the Devil. They're not, are they? They will be when I get up there. <laughs> Just the four of you, yeah? We've come a long way But we're not too sure where we've been Tighten your bra straps, girls! Oh, I'm nervous and a bit sweaty! Let's do this! <laughs> That gives me absolute goosebumps. As a big Take That fan, I can't wait for that to come out. And that is the movie version of the show Greatest Days, the musical. And actually, here in Manchester, we get to see that before the movie comes out. Now, you might remember it for the first time around when it was called The Band. It actually opened here in Manchester. Now, don't expect that it is a biopic of Take That. It isn't. It's about a group of friends who just come together over their love of a boy band. And we've all been there, haven't we? I absolutely adored Take That as a youngster. And of course, it features all the Take That hits. It is fantastic. But as I say, we don't have to wait until the movie comes out because get this yes greatest days the musical is coming to manchester in may before that film comes out from the 16th to 27th it's going to be at the palace theater and there's been such an amazing buzz about this starring in it you've got kim marsh and her daughter emily they are going to be the older and younger versions of one of the characters and i can reveal that next week week we are going to have one of the stars of Greatest Days the Musical right here on Live in the Hive. You definitely do not want to miss it. I'm going to get all of the gossip. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Now talking of things that are fantastic, I love it when something champions new writing, especially when it comes to female writers. And that's exactly what Vignettes has been doing for the past four installments. Yes, it's on its way back to Hope Mill Theatre and the people behind it joined me this week to tell me more about it. So give it up for Hannah Ellis Ryan and Alex Keelan. Oh, they're doing a fab job for theatre. Well, ladies, it is a brilliant to catch you and talk about vignettes, which is coming to Hope Mill Theatre. This is the fourth time round. How fantastic is that, Hannah? 
I know we're so lucky and it feels like I mean I hope and Al I feel like you feel this way as well we just we just understand it better and better every yeah. single year and it just gets I hope just I mean the first one we ever did we were obsessed with and we loved but somehow it feels like it does just get better every year we just hopefully get better at it I would agree with that yeah and the first one took us by surprise actually because we didn't know how it would go down and we had a four-night run at Hope Mill Theatre in 2019 um, in February just before the pandemic hit and luckily for us the phone rang off the hook and um, all the tickets sold out and the reception was incredible and we were really blown away um, so there's a massive need for more uh, stories by women I think. Oh, absolutely. We'll get to that in a bit. But how did it come about, you know, back then? How did that first one come about? Well, um, I'm currently sitting in the back of my hair salon and I used to run a writing group in here on Sundays. Um, I'm not a hairdresser. Uh, yeah, I don't possess those. Oh, I'm gutted now. I thought I could Sorry, have a whilst we were talking about yeah, it. No, my partner's a hairdresser um, and Hannah and I were having a discussion about the lack of opportunities for female playwrights and the um, imbalance and I mentioned that um, I'd love to do a night of short plays written by women and basically Hannah the next day rang me when we're in, it's done. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. If you get the chance to work with Hannah Ellis, do it, seriously. You yeah. sound like you make things happen straight away, Hannah, yeah? Well, I mean, the right things. I think that's the difference. Like something like this, when Alex said it, it just made sense to me on every level. I thought, I know so many talented people. I mean, obviously actors, but writers, directors. It's so hard to crack through that wall. You yeah. can get to a certain point in your career and then it's really hard to press through that next wall so for me the idea of having a night where people can just show off I'm like yes let's let people show off and show what they can do and because of course the industry in Manchester is so generous mm -hmm. like casting directors and producers they they will come they want to find new talent they want to see things so I think any opportunities to show off the emerging and, and, and talent out there and I'm sure that um as you say we might come to this but something that we do as a bit of point of difference in vignettes is we do try to immerse in um some really great established writers as well because people again are slightly more likely to come and watch something if they're like oh the fabulous Debbie Oates from Corrie oh the fabulous this and so then they get to write something they may have been sitting on for years and always wanting to write but they also get to work with all these fresh other writers who might give them an idea they hadn't thought of before and then they get to pass on their wisdom as well so it's all sort of like win 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 and um so for me kind of when Alex says something like that I'm like well yeah we have to make that happen because who wouldn't want that and thankfully we've validated that the community are right behind us oh it totally yeah. makes sense and such a great opportunity from both sides on that one but how do you choose and will it down to six that must be really hard it's a very it's, good question <laughs> it's so fun though as well actually um and so far we, we've you know we've never been stuck for people to yeah. approach and ask um and like hannah mentioned before we were really keen to have a mixture of really established writers and emerging writers um and so yeah there's just endless talent in manchester so it's it's yeah. that's one of the fun fun parts and we both take um a role in that really don't we we have yeah definitely we work meet up and have a coffee and yeah <laughs> have great. fun good Ooh. Yeah. We work um, on that really well together and, and I something I really feel so grateful for is for her productions, we often will get writers writing in with scripts or something or people saying, oh, I'd love to work with you. And of course, committing to producing a play, someone's written it, that's like a years and years yeah. and years of a commitment and a lot of work. So when someone is amazing and really brilliant you think well at least I can say please come write for vignettes or you know suggest them when we're having coffee because it means that you get to work with these great people but it's not quite the huge commitment of like one play which is yeah a lot yeah. of work <laughs> honestly it is just brilliant and these six different shorts that we've got this yeah. it, it's lo loads of different ranges that we're going to see on the night so actually you've got your ticket and you like you get a little bit of everything don't you yeah. tell us about 
the six that you've chosen? Um, so we've got a, an amazing writer called Homi, who has got a fantastic play about um, the consequences of um, a rite of passage, a, ja a Japanese funeral. Um, it's really funny, <laughs> but I mean, you know, uh, it's really, really great play. I was about to go, a funeral, funny. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, well, it's, based on, it. it's based on, it's based on, uh, her actual life like, experience, it. something yeah. that happened to Homie when she went to a funeral and she got confronted with this. Oh, by the way, don't you know about this tradition that you have to partake in? And she was like, I'm sorry, what? Uh, it's absolutely hilarious. So that is one I'm very excited to see come to life. It's got an incredible cast. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's one. And Nikki Mail has done a, a folk tale kind of um, brilliant, beautiful, poetic piece. Um, about a couple and how um, they're on completely different communication pages um, that's really just so beautifully written. I'm really excited to see that one. Then we've got Steph Lacey, who um, is an emerging writer in Manchester. She's written for TV a bit and for theatre, and she's written about grief. Um, and her play um, is a sort of an unusual take on it with a grief chorus that's slightly to do with the Greek grief chorus um, but it's actually again quite funny she's got a naturally comedic voice so um, that's a really lovely gorgeous play then mine's like a repeated punch in the face <laughs> it's really high energy it's a teenage girl who um, and my play explores hope, resilience, class, um, touches on themes of domestic violence. Um, but it's all told, told through this teenage girl in a bedroom. It's like really fast paced, funny, very dark. Um, and then we've got Laura Harper, um, who's a great writer. She's had a couple of plays on at Hope Mill Theatre. Hers is really funny about um, two women in a park that have a chance meeting and I'm trying not to give anything away here because I want people <laughs> to really enjoy it but it's around uh, a relationship um yeah, really funny really lovely moments in it so Lakani um is a great uh, new emerging writer her piece is really interesting it's about um mental health and masking and it's told through the the eyes of um a young woman who's a performer, who's uh, mixed heritage, neurodivergent, um, and it's, again, very funny, very dark, really interesting way to explore mental health and some of the other themes that she touches on. And I think, is that is that all six? Yeah, yeah. yeah you did well there, Alex. Honestly, Thanks. you get top marks for remembering all of that, getting all the points <laughs> right, and absolutely selling it really well because they all sound great pieces and as yeah. before, you know quite diverse things that not always get a platform for you know it's not yes. initially that someone would go oh yes like you say let's put that on but it needs yeah. to be seen because it's quality work yeah definitely we, and that's yeah. what we love don't we about it being, is yeah. and I have always been amazed you know again my producer cynical brain i'm always looking for the gaps and everything and say this is the fourth year around and we've never had two stories that have been no. similar we've never had similar stories yeah. and you think this is literally a walking advertisement for why you need more women writing things because there's so much to say like homie's piece for example of in the funeral you think how did i not know that this existed how did i not know about this ritual it'll be made into i'm sure someone will sweep that up and want it to be a tv series or something because it's so funny so yes we need more there's no yeah. lack of content that's for sure Oh, no. definitely not. Absolutely. I'm dying to know what that ritual is myself. So I You'll will have to book to see. I will. I will. <laughs> definitely. And it also sounds like a brilliant community because I guess these writers, as you say, get to know each other and learn from each other. And, and that helps going forward, doesn't it? Totally. And it, this time round, um, our first session was so gorgeous. Everyone really opened up. And um, it was such a privilege to be in the room listening to people, first of all, sharing their ideas, but then talking about their life experiences and being really open and really supportive. Um, and 
I do know that other writers from vignettes have kept in touch with each other. We're, we're building a network here, and that was something that we wanted to do from the start. So we wanted to create more work for female creatives. We wanted to create a network, and it exists. There's so much love, and each year um, on Twitter, you see like lots of posts from the actors backstage, you know, group photographs, and it, it's just a really lovely environment that's fostered every single time two great women there absolutely smashing it i love what they're doing and vignettes sounds a brilliant night at the theater just a little taster of six brilliant new plays and maybe you've never been and seen a play before maybe you're a musical lover why don't you just go down there and dip your toe in a great way to whet your appetite and uh, maybe try something different and of course that is on at hope mill theater next week now talking of what's on at theatre if you want to find out what is on at your local theatre throughout the week then do head down to I Love Manchester's website they've got all the details there that you need to know and you can also give us a follow on the social see what we've been up to we're on Twitter and Instagram at live in the hive 21 and of course we are here every week every Sunday night at eight o'clock you will find us in my garden bar the hive giving you the latest news and interviews from the theatre world. So make a date for next week, spread the word to others, and I'll see you then. <laughs>